channel simply structure in the previous video we have designed 10 columns c1 to c10 carrying an axial load and a uniaxial bending moment now in this video we will discuss that whether these 10 columns that we have designed are safe or not so in order to check the safety of the columns i need to prepare the interaction curve like this for example my column C8 is carrying an axial load of 1836.34 kN and a design bending moment of 247.90 kN meter. Now I will plot this point having in uh, on the x axis I will take the moment and on the y axis I will take the load PU. And if I plot the point for the column C8, it will come somewhere here so now after plotting the interaction curve i came to know that my point for the column c8 is lying outside the interaction curve so if any point is lying outside the interaction curve my column will fail and similarly all other columns uh, points for all other columns are shown here and all uh, all the points are lying inside the interaction curve so all the columns will be safe except the column C8. So now I will show you that how to prepare this interaction curve and how to plot the points of all the columns and check the safety of the columns. So first of all to prepare this interaction curve I need the value. What I need is I need the values of PU and MU at different values of x u by d to plot the interaction curve. Now the formula to calculate the p u and m u are shown here. So if my x u value is less than d then I will use this formula for p u and if my x u is more than d so it, here it should be more than d. So if my x u is more than d then I will use this formula for calculating the PU value. Similarly for MU also I have two values, two formulas that is if my XU value is less than D, less than or equal to D then I will use this formula or else I will use this formula for MU. Now if, if you see in all these formulas I need the value of FSI, FCI. So what are these values? The, these are the values of stress in steel and stress in the concrete. And what else I need? I also need the values of C1. I also need the value of C2. So first of all, what I need is the value of stress in the steel and stress in the concrete. To calculate the stress in the steel, first of all, I need the strain in the steel. So to calculate the strain in the steel at different values of x u by d. So here I have taken the values of x u by d at the interval of 0 0.025. So to calculate the strain in the steel, I need to use these two formulas. So what I will do is, in each layer I will calculate the strain in the steel. So strain in the steel in the first layer, when xu is xu by d is 0.1. So to calculate the strain in the steel in the first layer, what I will do is, I will use this formula. So if my xu by d multiplied by d is less than or equal to d, so in the if condition I will put this a uh, statement that is if my x u by d is in multiplied by d is less than or equal to d then I will use 0 0.0035 times of this formula that is written here and so what I will do is I will in the if condition I will write whole formula and press enter so I will get the strain in the steel in the first layer corresponding to x u by d equal to 0.1. Similarly, the strain in the steel in the second layer will be, I will again use the same formula, but here in place of yi, I will use y2. So y2 will be what? So y2 will be this value. That is the, for calculating the strain in the second layer, I will use the yi as y2. Similarly, to calculate the strain in the strain in the third layer of the steel, I will use here y3 in this formula.
and similarly the strain in the fourth, fifth and the sixth layer. So once I have the strain in all the six layers corresponding to xu by d equal to 0 0.1, what I will do is I will select these six cells and after I get the plus sign, I will drag it to the bottom and I will get the remaining values. So now I got the strain in the steel corresponding to different values of xu by d. So I will calculate the stress in the steel. The stress in the steel and the strain in the steel are related by the following relation. So for example, my in the my case my Fy is Fe415. So for Fy equal to 415 Newton per mm square, if my strain value is 0 0.00380, then my stress value is 360.9. So what I will do is, I will take the if condition and if my Fy is equal to 500, so if my Fy is 500 then for the 500 case if Fy is equal to 500 and if my strain value is more than or equal to 0 0.00417, so if my strain value is more than or equal to 0 0.00417 then my stress value will be 434.8. Now, if my strain value is more than or equal to 0 0.0032, so if my strain value is more than or equal to 0 0.00312, then what I need to do, I need to interpolate the value between 0 0.00312 and 0 0.00417. So here I have used the formula for interpolation. And similarly, if my strain value is more than 0 0.00277, then I will interpolate between 0 0.00277 and 0 0.00312 and so in this whole cell I have used the formulas for interpolation. So this whole table has been interpolated in the single cell. So I will get the value of Fs1 that is stress in the steel in the layer number 1. Similarly the stress in the steel in the layer 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and once I have these 6 cells I will get this plus sign, I will drag it to the bottom and I will get the remaining values of stresses in the steel corresponding to different values of xu by d. So now I got the stress in the steel. Now the next step is to calculate the stress in the concrete. So stress in the concrete is given by the following formulas. So similarly I will first calculate the stress in the concrete, 6 values of concrete and again I will draw, uh, drag it down and I will get the stress in the concrete for different values of xu by d. The next step is to calculate the values of c1 and c2. So again the formulas for c1 and c2 are given here. So all these formulas you can find in any of the reference books. Uh, I will add few reference books in the description below. So once I have these two values of c1 and c2, Again I will drag it and I will get the values of C1 and C2 corresponding to different values of xu by d. Now my next step is to calculate the value of Pi times of Fsi minus Fci divided by Fck. So what is Pi here? Pi is here percentage of reinforcement. So in our case the percentage of reinforcement is 2.801%. So I will calculate the values for all the 6 layers. So here y1 is nothing but uh, I have just represented this value by y1, y2, y3, y4, y5 and y6. So I will calculate all these values and again I will drag it to the bottom. So I will get the remaining values. The next step is to calculate. Pi multiplied by Fsi minus Fci divided by Fck times of Yi by D. So whatever these values are there, I just need to multiply it by Yi by D because this value is Pi times of Fsi minus Fci divided by Fck and this value is Pi times of Fsi minus Fci by Fck multiplied by Yi by D. So the above table values I just need to multiply it by Yi divided by D. 
So for the first layer, my y i will be y1. So y1 is nothing but this value that is 197.5. Similarly, for the second layer, it will be y2 and so on and so forth. So I will get the values of pi times of fsi minus fci divided by fck times of yi by capital D. And my formula for pu is this. So in, in that I require what? pi times of fsi minus fci by fck. So this is the reason why we have calculated this value. So this value we have calculated here. So what, what I need is, I need the summation of that. So summation of that means the summation, for example, if I need to calculate summation for the summation of pi times of fsi minus fci divided by fck for let's say 0.125 then it will be summation of all these values. So I will get the values of pu and mu with the help of following formulas. So if you have doubt, any doubt in these formulas, then you can comment uh, in the YouTube comment box. So once I have these values of pu and mu at different values of xu by d, what I need to do is I will plot the interaction curve for these values. So how to plot this interaction curve? So let me show you this. So what I will do is, first of all, I will select this table containing the values of PU and MU. Then I will go into the insert function. In the insert, I will click on the recommended charts and I will click on OK. So this is my interaction curve. Now. Let me cut this and paste it here. So this is my interaction curve for different values of xu by d. Now if you, if you see in the interaction curve we generally take the x axis as mu and the y axis as pu. But here it is opposite. So what we will do is click on this graph we will click here. and if you click on any of these points, then you will see that my x axis will be p, uh, x axis here is pu, but we want x axis as mu. So, what I will do is simply I will cut this and I will paste this after this value and I will press enter. So, now I have my x axis as mu and the y axis as the pu that is our load. So now what I will do is I will plot the points for my columns. So what I will do is I will select these two columns that is my pu and the mu value and again I will go into the insert recommended charts. So here I will go into the scattered points, click on this and click on OK. So now I got the all the points for PU and MU. Again in this my PU is on X axis but I want my PU on the Y axis. So what I will do is. I will click on any of the point, I will cut this portion and I will paste it after the first comma. So what I want is, I have this graph and I have this graph, so I want to merge these two graphs. So what I will do is, I will click on this, I will go to home, I will cut, then I will 
click on this sheet containing PU and MU interaction curve. I will click on this. Again, I will go to home and I will paste it. So now I got my points. And if you see, this point is lying outside the interaction curve. And if you see, this point is my point which is having a PU of 1836.34 kN and MU, which is the x axis, my MU is 247.90. So, if I see my MU, which is having 247.90 kN meter of movement, then it is my column number C8. So, my column number C8 is failing. Why it is failing? Because this point is lying outside the interaction curve. That's why my column C8 is failing. So, that's all, guys. This is how you check whether the column is safe or not by plotting the interaction curve. So if you like this content then please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so do you don't miss any update. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.